The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Kay Adams has offered some advice for us Jet fans about the upcoming season. She also weighed in on the Jets offseason. Will we, will we agree or disagree with the big-time NFL media star? We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show, live on a Saturday. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go, Jet fans. If you're tuned in live right now, thanks for watching and make sure you hit the like button. We got 51 likes right now and we need more. It helps the channel continue to grow. We're approaching 37,000 subscribers, which is just incredible. So shout out to all the Jet fans for your support. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, it's easy. You hit that join button on the right-hand corner, and boom, you are good to go. Let's talk about what Kay Adams had to say. So we've done a lot of negative commentary on the Jets, right? We talked about the dumbass comments made by Colin Cowherd, the even worse comments made by Chris Canty. But how about some positive comments made by one of the greats in the industry? So this was Kay Adams on her FanDuel TV show a couple days back talking about the New York Jets offseason, and also offering some advice for us Jets fans. Now, it's really hard to find a hole in this Jets roster right now if they can stay healthy. And they still have the 10th overall pick to play with. And because they kind of addressed all of the big glaring needs that need to be checked off on the list, they can pretty much take what is the best situation in going into any draft. You can go best option. Best player available, regardless of position. I'm talking defense, offense, whatever. Mostly offense. They got to get somebody O line. They got to get a wide receiver. Whoever's there, they can swing big and sort of let it fall to them. And that's casual. That feels good. That must feel good if you're the Jets and you do have all these expectations on your shoulders. And because they don't have any obvious needs, I think it means that they can aggressively trade up if they want to, uh, if and snag a Marvin Harrison, a Neighbors, a Joe Alt. They can push all the chips in. Is what I'm saying. If I I was a Jets fan, I probably wouldn't pull the trigger on buying in until week one's in the back. After the trauma that you went through week one against Buffalo Monday night, like that is trauma. And so I totally understand, don't buy in, be skeptical. But as somebody that's not as invested or plugged in or like live and die with it, it's hard not to, from, not to get excited. It's so hard to objectively see like, okay, I know what they're doing. They did the right things, made the right moves. And they've got a lot of potential this year, um, especially when you look up at New England. New England, who I kind of liked because they didn't add anything and did nothing. We talked about it yesterday, but they're completely going under the radar. I think, the, you know, FanDuel Sportsbook has them at four and a half wins. That's I'm taking the over on that all day. I think they can they can do better than that perform. It's the other three teams that have the lofty expectations. But now Buffalo went through the red wedding of Game of Thrones. They've got major changes in Miami as well. So there is a big opportunity here in the AFC East. And I think it all works in the favor of the New York Jets. How about that? It all works in the favor of the New York Jets. Now, I want to focus in on what Kay said as far as the advice for Jet fans first, because she's right. Losing Aaron Rodgers last season, there's a lot of trauma attached to it. And while myself and I think a lot of Jet fans have tried to move forward and focus on the positives, there's a large portion of this fan base that's just not going to believe in this team until you see it. And that's fair. And I'd be the first to tell you, if this team does not win this year, there needs to be, and there will be, oh, by the way, major wholesale changes but 
all we could do is just evaluate the Jets based on what they have done this offseason. And if you look at what they have done this offseason, what can you truly complain about? Seriously, you can't win games in April. You can't win games in March. But what you can do is try and build your team to fix the issues you had the previous year. And how can we look at what the Jets have done this offseason and not point to the fact that Joe Douglas has done his job? They added three bona fide starters to an offensive line that last year was one of the worst in the league. They added one of the best backup quarterbacks they could have signed in Tyrod Taylor. So if, God forbid, Aaron Rodgers does suffer an injury, they're not screwed because Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon are the backups. They've gone out there and they added a legitimate number two wide receiver. And I get it, Mike Williams coming off injury. But you don't need him to be a number one. You have a number one. You need to be a solid contributor. He's immediately the second best receiver on this team. I don't know what Alan Lazard is. I like Xavier Gibson, but I'm not counting on him in year two. I think he's a gadget special teams type player, wide receiver five or six. So objectively speaking, how could you not look at what the Jets have done? And Kay's right and feel pretty confident about the direction they're headed. And once again, I'd like to point this out to Jet fans. Look at the players the Jets had playing for them last year, and then I'll ask you this question. What teams are they currently on right now? Has Makai Becton been signed? No. Has Dwayne Brown been signed? No. Has Lakin Tomlinson been signed? No. So not only did you replace those three players on your O-line with a Hall of Famer in Tyron Smith, a really good right tackle that we know firsthand as fans because we watched it with the Jets and Morgan Moses, And a guy that you're going to have to take my word for, everyone I speak to who covered John Simpson with the Ravens will tell you, he's an ascending, really good young player. So that's the offensive line improvements. Mike Williams is a beast. I mean, anyone who follows football knows how good he is. Yes, he's coming off injury, but it's not like he's been an injury-plagued player. He plays through a lot of his injuries. He'll be on the injury report. He'll be questionable probably every week. But he plays. Go look at his games played. I think there's a misconception with Mike Williams. Am I a little concerned about it? Sure, but I still think they could add a veteran receiver. I think they still have the draft to address receiver. And that brings us to Kay's other comments. What if the Jets put all their chips in the table and go for it? The more I think about it, the more I kind of want them to to do that. As much as I want the offensive lineman, if you could get me Roma Dunze by only having to move up a couple slots, or if you really want to go for the jugular Joe Douglas and try and get Marvin if he's available, or try and get Malik Neighbors, I'm on board with it. Because this is a league about scoring points. And yeah, obviously you're rolling the dice with Tyron Smith, but I got to hope that Carter Warren could take a step this year. They could find someone in the third round that could contribute. They still signed David Bakhtiari. Like, I'm going to operate under the premise that if Kay's right and they go for the jugular, that they still have added some more pieces to this offensive line. Because right now, it's tough to picture Tyron Smith making it through a full season. So who's coming in to play the games he misses? I still think you need another tackle. I know they like Carter Warren, but I think in an all-in year, you got to be more protected than just a guy you took in, what, the fourth round or fifth round last year? I got to see more. And then that brings us to her, her advice about trauma, right? For all the negative Jet fans out there, for the Peter Castros, who's like maybe the most bipolar Jet fan, or the Allens, or the JJs of the world, I think Kay was specifically talking to you, all right? You have to objectively look at what this team has done, and you have to be 100% encouraged by what they have done so far. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to wait till after week one before you fully believe, that's fine. I get it. We're all still dealing with that trauma. That was trauma. People might laugh, but I'm telling you, seeing Aaron Rodgers go down four plays in, was one of the worst moments of my life. And if you're a true Jet fan, as crazy as it sounds, and I get it, this is sports, it's the candy store, it's not real life, but you know what? To us, it is. And that moment was a disaster. And it was painful. So there is trauma associated with that. So I like that call on last season and the Rodgers injury specifically trauma. She's right. But as far as the options for the Jets, that's what's so exciting. But I think I'm on board with go get me Roma Dunze if it only costs me a fourth this year and a pick next year to go and do it. Get in front of Chicago, get to eight, and take them. You know, I I think the offensive line is is obviously still my preference if they can't trade up. 
either take the best available guy at 10 or as I did on our mock draft with Matt O'Leary and Richie the other day on the Jets round table, trade back and get the tackle. And we were able to get Troy Fontana from Washington, who has both guard and tackle flexibility, which I think in an ideal scenario, that's what the Jets are bringing in. Someone who could play both. I'll give you a great analogy here. I think it was Connor Rogers who made this point first. Think of it like at the sixth man in basketball. That's what that offensive lineman would be. So go for the jugular or trade back. I would love to see the Jets do one of the two. As far as staying at 10, yeah, look, if you love the player, no one's going to care if you stayed at 10 if you got the pick right. So in the moment, we can react and say they should have traded out or oh, they could have traded up. We'll never know. We don't know what offers the Jets were presented with. We don't know what Joe Douglas was trying to do. If he's on the phone calling Chicago and Chicago says no, or if Atlanta says no, we don't know. Or if Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers say no if they tried to go up. But as far as like logistically going out there and executing the offseason, how could you not be encouraged? And I spent a lot of time here talking about the offense for the Jets for obvious reasons, but the biggest knock on Joe Douglas this offseason until the Hassan Reddick trade was letting Bryce Huff walk. And he replaced Bryce Huff with a better Bryce Huff. Hassan Reddick, best case scenario is what Bryce Huff will end up being. Hassan Reddick's that dude right now. And if the Jets don't extend him, he's playing for a contract. He's going to be all in. And this guy was in a Super Bowl two years ago. He knows how to win. He comes from a winning culture. But you can't win unless you have the quarterback. So we could talk about winning, culture, this and that. They have the quarterback. He just played four plays. Aaron Rodgers is a winner. Despite what Chris Canty wants to say, calling him a cancer, he's won 85% of his games in the NFL. So at the end of the day, if you're a Jet fan and you're not encouraged by what has transpired so far, what are you? What, what, what am I missing? You're just going to look at the glass half empty until you see it, which is fair. But if you objectively just look at this offseason, how could you not be encouraged? What more could Joe Douglas have done, in your opinion, than what he's done so far? You can't get everybody. But think about it. The Jets were able to add three legitimate studs to their offensive line. The guys they replaced them with are not in football right now. There's a chance the guys who started at quarterback for the Jets last year, all 17 games, Zach Wilson, because we're not counting Rodgers, he played four plays, Tim Boyle, Trevor Simeon, they're not on NFL rosters week one of this year. And this team still won seven games. Not four, not three, not five. They still won seven games. So the second year in a row telling you that their floor is seven wins. And if they could get some injury luck, the biggest being Aaron Rodgers, why can't they go from seven to 10 or 11, maybe more if Rodgers is really good and they get even more injury luck than I'm talking about, and compete not just for a playoff spot, but for the AFC East. What have the Bills done this offseason to get better? Oh, they lost Stephon Diggs and lost Mitch Morse and lost their leading sack getter and Leonard Floyd and lost this guy and that guy and Gabe Davis and et cetera. Oh, the Dolphins lost two stud players on both sides of the ball in their prime and Robert Hunt on their offensive line and Kristen Wilkins on their defensive line. New England sucks, and that's great to say, all right? So, once again, you look at the Patriots. They're not good. The Jets finally stuck at the Belichick in his last game. There, There's no, oh, this losing streak hovering over the Jets next year when they play. That should be two wins right there. So, the Jets won 7-10 and 10 last year. They only split with the Patriots. I just found two more wins. At least one. You don't think they beat the Atlanta Falcons if they had Aaron Rodgers this past year? Of course they do. Or the Raiders this past year? Like, they, there's 10 wins right there, and there's other games that are borderline. So, I think Kay nails it from the standpoint that, like, we Jet fans are, like, cynical and rightfully so. But, like, if you remove the word – I've said this for weeks already. You remo remove the word Jets from the name, from the helmet, and God willing, these ugly, this ugly-ass logo is going away for good when the – your retro logo on my Ricky NY hat right here is back permanently. 
It's a damn good team. And yeah, the, the biggest question you could have, I think, is on the head coach. That's fair. But I happen to think this head coach has done a lot of good and has learned through these last three and ultimately has a quarterback and a backup quarterback if, God forbid, Aaron can't play every game. So on that note, we'll open it up to your comments and questions. A bunch of people are on hold on our Gus Buster hotline. Link is pinned to the comments. Make sure you guys go to GusBuster.com and use promo code Jake so you can get 15% off on any umbrella. Before we open it up, reminder, best way to support me is to join the Patreon. We need you in the Discord. Late last night, the return of We the People was promised to members of of the Asmaniac crew. So be on the lookout for a Weed the People call, according to Weed in our Discord. If you want in on the Discord to interact with all the personalities that you see calling the show, patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show. You can also get the show in podcast form. You get your name in the countdown ticker. You get bonus perks that are not included on YouTube. And it's just another way to support me as I continue to do this daily content show on the Jets all year round. Here we go to your calls. Johnny. Johnny Quest, he's first up on the show. What's up, Johnny? What's up, Jake? How you doing? What's up, man? Not much. Listen, uh, got a pound of nine and a half. This morning I was at a diner. I told my friends, 500 over nine and a half for the wins of the Jets. They thought I was crazy. I put it in. And uh, my question to you is, do you believe in destiny? <laughs> I-, I believe in do, and I think the Jets are certainly do. I'll tell you a little story here real quick. Um what are your two best NFL Jet teams ever of all time, in your opinion? What two teams, seasons? That I have personally watched are the Jets. Oh, overall? Uh, I mean, the Super Bowl year and probably 98. Okay, that's my same answer for me. My father was born 1946. He turned 18 in 1968, which is the season of the 69 Super Bowl. I was born 1980. 98, I was 18. Jets made it to the championship game. Guess who turned 18 this year? Your son? My son, who's a redhead, by the way, a little ginger. He turned 18 this year. This is it, baby. This is it. I'm telling right. you. I, I now, love it, Johnny. Hey, from your lips to God's ears, man. We got to get your son to call in before the season starts. Yeah, to make sure it happens. Uh, after the Seahawks game, said I cried. He was lying. I didn't cry after that Seahawks game. But I did cry in 98 when I was 18 for that uh, championship game. That's great. That's great. Well, I, I, hey, I hope you're right, man. I, I mean, oh. look, the, the idea of just seeing the Jets in the playoffs feels foreign at times. So, uh, you know, I, I'll take another run to at least a championship game. And you know, I'll tell you what, in 98, I thought I was suffering. I was a fan for like 13 years at the time. I thought I was hurting. Man, man, it it's, gets worse. So anyone that's 20, God bless you. Hopefully we're in before uh, you get my age. I'm 44 now. I'm hoping because it gets harder and harder, man. But we stick yeah. through. Let's go Jets, baby. Johnny, great call, man. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully you're right. Destiny. Destiny, he says. Edward writes in, history shows we have no idea what Joe Douglas will do. All I know is it will be unexpected and fantastic. In JD, we trust. All right. Shout out to Edward. He's been an Asmaniac for seven months. In JD, we trust you, say. V-Man has written in with a super chat. Cha-ching, V-Man. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you'll find you get what you need. Insert acoustic guitar. (laughs) Thank you, V-Man. That was wonderful. Uh, Super chat from Jimmy from Seattle. Let's not forget last time the Jets had an elite draft. They coached the Senior Bowl. When they are aggressive in the draft, they are great. Now add good free agents. Yeah, look, when it comes to trades, I have full faith in Joe Douglas. I think he's he's done very well in that department. It's probably his best strength as a GM. And it's not just the Jamal Adams trade. It's getting a fourth for Chris Herndon. It's getting a two, a four, and a six for Sam Darnold. It's trading for Morgan Moses. It's trading up to get Brees Hall and Jermaine Johnson. Like it's been in the draft. It's also been uh, in you know on the veteran market as well so yeah, i'm with you jimmy good to hear from you my man all right let's get back to your calls right now ladies and gentlemen you heard me just read his super chat and god willing he's going to tell us why he's wearing a specific hat right now it's time for another v-man call hopefully he no sleeping adios mio <laughs> v-man up next hello v-man what's up Jay? How you doing? I, the hat is what you're gonna not the shirt 
Like, well, come on. The, the shirt looks good too. I, I I like the shirt as well. I have I, I installed yeah. a monitor now, so I got you full screen here, my little. Hey, you know, like I I want anybody in the chat knows what this shirt is called. I will be amazed. But yeah, no. All right, I have to get up again so you can actually see it. Me, man, uh, you, know, you are aware that it's like forty five degrees today. You're dressed like it's I like know. a summer day. I know, but I'm just wearing it because I'm actually doing my uh, trip planning today. So you're you so because you're planning your trip to Puerto Rico. Let me let me get this straight. You're dressed like you're in Puerto Rico. Do I have that right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, thank thank you. It was honestly just I was actually going to get the football, but I agree with what uh, Kay was saying. You know, like look, you're right. A lot of Jets fans are shell shocked. You know, I mean, I honestly don't think I honestly think Jets fans probably wouldn't believe they won the Super Bowl until the New York Post ran an article about a stupid comment by uh, Eric Adams at the victory parade. That's like, that's how much I think Jets fans wouldn't buy them winning the Super Bowl. Well, let's be real. If the Jets were to win the Super Bowl right before the game, it, 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 the game wouldn't be completed. They'd be right about to win, and then the earthquake would just end the entire world. You know, <laughs> something like that would happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but no, honestly, honestly, yes, it's okay to be shell shocked. But look, when you just, you're right, when you take away the, the fact that we're the New York Jets, you know, up, oh, Rico the Pup got, Rico the Pup got what my shirt's called. What, what is it? Rico the Pup got it? Yeah. What is it? He's a Guayabera. Okay. Um, yeah, but. Would you, would you like to respond to Alan who says, you look like you're going to sell Cuban cigars on Arthur Avenue? <laughs> I mean, I think that's actually the history of this year, but it's like that actually was a, a Cuban cigar maker asked his wife to make him a shirt with four pockets so he could have his, his cigars and the stuff he used to, to make his cigars with. That, that's like literally the story of this shirt. But yeah, every every Hispanic grandpa wears this shirt. But let's just... V-Man, you're the best, all right? Never change. That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Boomtown says three guarantees in life, death, taxes, and V-Man's bed being made. V-Man is always on point in regards to the bed being made. Boomtown, you are 1,000% correct. Frankie from Flatbush is watching the show. Wow. Odd stat. Rodgers was 1-0 last year. Frankie, where have you been, man? Where have you been? Uh, Rogers won and oh last year. True. I mean, look, people are, you know, Chris Canty should know the facts. Aaron Rodgers has never lost a game as the starting quarterback of the Jets. All right. How could a man be a cancer, Chris, if Aaron Rodgers is undefeated as Jet quarterback? This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. <laughs> What a clown comment. Let's go to Gary. He's up next on the show. Hello, Gary. What's going on, Jake? The, 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 the cancer statement, I agree. It's just completely over the line and ridiculous. Don't worry. <laughs> this is what I would like to do to Chris Canty. Into the shadow realm you go. That's the problem with Aaron Rodgers. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Or here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> well done, Jay. You asked an interesting question before, and you said, what more could have Joe Douglas done this offseason? To this point, to this point, to this obviously point. he's not done. He could have signed Jameis Winston, but let's, let's talk. Uh, about don't start. <laughs> don't start. Um, this is interesting to me, right? Because, like, I said the Jets should draft the best player available. Like, almost all teams should. And you blasted me for that. I feel like if I was a little bit more attractive, if I was looked like Kay Adams and I said the same thing, you'd be a lot more forgiving towards me, right? Because I said, you just need to draft a good football player. And you said, no, you need to draft me. No, so, I said I, I said you need to draft a good football player at a position. And you are amazing how you could somehow twist my words. I've been very clear. I'm not best player available at, at – 
defense or defensive line or any defensive player or quarterback. I very specifically said best player available at a position of need. And like for the Jets, they're lucky this draft is stacked at the two biggest positions of need on offense, receiver and offensive line. So that's my point. Take one of those positions. I, I agree that this position is stacked where the Jets need it to be stacked. I agree with that. Which is why you want to somehow take a tight end. See, th- th- this is like, I, I, okay, you don't like the position that he's labeled that. Like, if I said I only want to draft Steph Curry, if he's like Magic Johnson, you're like, well, I don't really think you understand how he plays. I, like, it's, I, I understand he's labeled as a tight end. He doesn't play like a tight end. The, the, the first touchdown Georgia scored this year was on an end around that they gave to Bowers and he took 40 yards. It's like, tight ends don't typically play like that. Um, fair. I, I just, I, I think there's such a big risk though. And still his position, like he's not your traditional tight end. I agree, but I'd feel more comfortable with trading up for Roma Dunze rather than taking Bowers at 10. I think a Dunze is going to be a better, more impactful player right away. I, I would be fine if they traded up to get Bowers to eight or nine. I, I I'm fine with that. Cause I, I think this is an, an all in year. And I mean, all in. I mean, like, light a match, burn the ships, put all your chips in, and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work out, you got to tear the whole thing down anyway, right? Because if you don't win this year with Aaron Rodgers, next year your chances get smaller. And the year that it gets even smaller. So it has to be this year. Like, I'm 40 years old. I've been watching sports since I'm five. The Mets, the Jets, and the Nets. Every year since I'm five. I've never bastard. seen a championship. <laughs> and, like, honestly, if it's not this year with the Jets, it ain't going to be the Mets. It ain't going to be the Nets. So when is it coming? Right? Like It's got to be this year. Like, it, it's it's this year. All in. Like, put everything in. I don't care. You want If you want to trade up to five and trade next year's first to get Marvin Harrison, do it. Because this is it. This is the one chance you got to win a Super Bowl. And like I said, I've been waiting 35 years watching sports my whole life to see one championship. Right? I feel like Chris Mad Dog Russo. One time. One time I want to win. It, this is it. I'm never going to have a better chance than this team right now. Fair, Gary. Fair. That's actually one of your better calls. That that is that. That might have been Gary's best call. Well done. Knockouts don't matter if you're landed of jabs. Well done by Gary. For the record, I was supposed to play that before we introduced him, but it's too funny to not still play. Shout out the Gator. Uh, look, I. I, I, I'm I still a bit weary of trading next year's one, but if they did it, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a mistake. You're all in. Gary's right. This is your best chance to win because as much as we all love Rodgers, he would be another year older next year. So what if he's really good this year and then he's a little worse the next year? That could be the difference in winning or not, you know? So, like, you really only have this year. Plus, this regime has this year to get next year. So I'm just weary of trading away next year's one. If you could do it without doing giving that up to go up to five if you want Marvin or you want Neighbors, Fine. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I get it. Super chats will cut the line. Keep it going. Gary wrote in earlier. By the way, we need Jake, I need to get you a new chair. Looks very uncomfortable. We will chip in and get you something so you're more comfy. The chair is actually fine. I have a nice little seat cushion on it. I have just, you know, I've been moving some moving into the apartment here. So it's a fine chair. You know, I just uh you know, had to get the lighting situated here. It's been a mess, but we're starting to get settled in. We got, I finally got what I wanted, right? I got my little mic on a stand. I mean, look at this. It's, this is big time right here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm doing all right. We got the monitor now. I mean, this is what it's all about. I feel like a real broadcaster. So I, I we, we got the, uh, the TVs in front of me so I could do some live streaming or watching games and react in real time. Things are coming together, Gary, but I appreciate the gesture. Big fellow writes in. He has a super chat. Never saw Kay Adams until today. Her parents deserve a well-deserved golf clap. Well done. <laughs> Big fella. You've been living under a rock? Kay Adams is a megastar. She used to be the host of Good Morning Football. Her uh, producer, Matt Hamilton, has been on this show. He's a good dude. Um, we've had. I've actually interviewed Kay. I had her on my old radio show on SB Nation. And I'm working on getting her on ESPN radio with me. So I'll share that when that happens. But yeah, Kay's awesome. She's super nice. Uh, Let's see. Back to the calls we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Neil time. Hello, Neil. What's up, Jake? Neil? I, 
I got a one. I'm back from Florida. I went down to the Sunshine State for a few days. You look tan. I missed a hor- horrendous rainstorms for four days in an earthquake. I, I my timing was pretty good. I had 80 degree weather. You had the opposite of me. I left Houston where I it's know. beautiful. I, I, I come texted back. you. I said, God, since you've been here, it's been it's uh, uh, apocalypse now. You better I know. Go back to Houston. I, you know, two earthquakes, rain nonstop, you know, it's just yeah, but look unbelievable. At, look at your low cost of living, moving back to New York from Houston. I mean, you're yeah. getting a bargain here. You know, you can't have everything. Now, let me, I'm going to go one up on the destiny. You ready for this? When my father went, when the Jets went to the Super Bowl, my father was born in 1931. He was 38. When they went to the championship game against Denver, I was 38. Guess who's going to be 38 this year? My daughter's going to be 38. Okay. Ah. So I'll give a one up on that destiny. And as far as the boxing guy was just on, what's his name again? Uh, he's Gary for a championship. Okay. Nobody's waiting longer than me for a championship on this chat. Maybe a couple guys. Okay. But we're ready. This is going to be the year. I mean, think about this a second. Last year, right? We were all so excited. We everybody on uh, everybody in sports was talking about us being a Super Bowl contender. Everybody was excited about Rodgers. Yet, when you look at the division last year, it was much more stacked than it was this year. Our schedule was daunting, way harder than it is this year, right? You have a way better roster than we had. And our teams in our division are all falling back. Yet, nobody expects us to win the division. Nobody expects us to go to the Super Bowl. And that's just what I want. I don't want optimism. I want pessimism by everybody else. This fan base, this chat, positive only. That's it. Okay? We are going to be the ones that get all the receipts and stick it up everybody's A's. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm excited for the season. I can't be excited for the Mets. I'm a Mets (laughs) fan. And, you know, I hear your bullshit on the Yankees. (laughs) Chuckly, you and your buddies there. I'm not that chuckly right now. But to me, that's just the – it's the waiting room for the football season. And I've always been that way. I went to the 86 champ. I was at game six, game seven. I was at all the home games in the 80s. I've been. I watched George Theodore and all the shitty Met teams. I've wa- I've been through it all, and a lot of misery in the Mets, just like with the Jets. But every dog has its day. Look, when Cincinnati Bengals, right, Jake? They used to be the laughing stock, right? Nobody thought the Bengals would ever get to a Super Bowl. Not with all those. Look years. at the Lions, Neil. Look at the Browns. The Lions, it, it can exactly. be done. It can be done. Exactly. Everything turns. Everything happens. We are going to be there. The Chicago Cubs won a World Series, right? Didn't they win a World Series, the Cubs? They did. That's right. How long did they wait to win a World Series? Longer than the Jets. That You bet your ass. Yeah, double the Jets. songs about the Cubs waiting to win World Series. And those fans are loyal fans. They go to the games. They watch. This is what we have as a Jet fan base, regardless of what we say, and this is it for us, and we're done, and this is the end. We're always here. We're always going to be rooting for our team, and I really think we have something to root for. I'll leave it at that. Have a great weekend. These goddamn exploding cigars. I got to go, Jake. I'll call back later. Shit. Neil's optimism is amazing. I love it. I love it. I'm ready for week one, Neil. Fire up the sprinter now. Let's go. We'll go from Mr. Positive to Mr. Negative. Ladies and gentlemen, JJ is on the line. Hello, JJ. What's going on, my friends? Greetings and salutations. Um, You know, I I always like people who call into the show and have um, unique perspectives. That's why Jerry is like literally one of my favorite callers because he's just his perspectives are so unique, but I, I had to call in to combat something that he was saying. He confused me because he's saying that he thinks this is our only year. Like this is the best shot that we'll have to win the Super Bowl. Yet he wants to draft Brock Bowers. 
Last year, the biggest, biggest, biggest issue on the team, despite what anybody says, I know you would say it was quarterback play. I, I disagree. I think the biggest issue was the offensive line. If we had a much better offensive line, we would have had we would at least won three more games if we just had competent offensive line play. So I don't see why uh, he would want. I don't see why he wants Brock Bowers over an offensive lineman because I mean. Yeah, we just grabbed a bunch of, you know, new old linemen this year, but the guys that we got are all pretty much coming off an of injury. AVT is coming off an of injury. Um, Tyron Smith is coming off an of injury. Uh, Morgan Moses is coming off an of injury. So we need we need to draft an old lineman in the first round. Like, there, there's there's nothing else that we need to do but draft the old lineman in the first round because that's the biggest issue we've had for the last couple of years. So, but Yeah, look, I, I agree with you because – Tight ends don't usually hit the ground running right away in the NFL. And if you're taking Bowers at 10, he doesn't get a grace period. Like, like uh, Jeremy Rucker's gotten two years to sit back and develop, and you expect him to be a contributor. Tyler Conklin really wasn't Tyler Conklin that we've seen his last year in Minnesota and then the first two years with the Jets until his third year, if you look at his stats. So, like, if you're taking Bowers at 10 because, well, Jake, he's not a tight end. He does so much more then okay, he better be one of the best players at his position in the league right away. Like that's that's the type of impact he needs to have. He needs to be as good as Sam Laporta was this past year for the Lions. So I agree. It's why I think if you're all in to win, mortgage some of your picks next year and move up and go get one of the big three if it takes that. Or if it only takes you know a couple picks to move up to get the third big three of the receivers, if it's most likely a doomsday, I'm on board with that as well. So I think I agree with you because this to me is their best shot at it. When you think of the standpoint of the division being vulnerable right now, Buffalo has $43 million in dead cap. They got to work through the jets have a chance to go for it. And Rogers is not getting younger. Like he will be good this year, but after that, who knows? And we don't even know for sure how great he'll be this year. Right? So like this to me is like, put all your chips in this regime's getting fired. If they don't win and, and go and move up. If there's a guy you believe in and you can get it within reason. I think we lost JJ with the internet there, but not a bad call from him. I will say this to JJ. It's a great question that was asked by Franco. Why is JJ always driving? It's a question we all don't know the answer to. JJ's always driving. V-Man's bet is always made. Neil is always smoking a cigar. Three givens with the Jake Asman show callers. Nick D writes in, yo, Jake, you think there's a shot we still get Bakhtiari? Absolutely. I think it's probably post-draft. I don't know if he could pass a physical yet. I think that's the delay. That's just me speculating. No one's told me that. Drew writes in with a super chat. Thank you, Drew. For Marvin, I don't care at all about next year's one. I get it. If you think he's that good, and like people do, I get it. I'm just a little weary. A little weary. Can I get neighbors without training next year's one? That's what I would look at because I think neighbors would be awesome. And if it's, I can only give up a two to get him as opposed to a one to move all the way up to get Marvin. I'd consider that. Comments, questions, super chats. will cut the line. Who's going to become an as maniac today. You know, they say the, the first Saturday of April is always a great, great day to become an as maniac. They've been saying that for years. So if you hit the join button, you will become an Asmaniac, and you will get a shout-out. Hennessy says, April 15th, new unis. That's the rumor. Hasn't been confirmed 100% yet, but I think that's the that's the rumor. Frankie says, I'm team O-line unless we can get one of the big three receivers. I think that's my philosophy, too, right now, because I think the talent level for the big three receivers is so good, you don't want to turn it down. Uh. Yodo says, it's our time, Jet fans. I hope. Uh, let's get back to the calls right now, shall we? We got V8 the Great on the line. What's up, V8? What's up, Jake? So you did say that uh, you're team O-line or you team uh, wide receiver for the uh, draft. I, if, if they could trade up within reason for one of the big three, I am on board with that. I'm also on board with offensive line. Like, if you tell me what I think is going to happen, I think it's more likely they they take an offensive lineman either a ten or a trade back. But I'm I'm very much open to the idea of moving up to get one of the receivers and just going for it. 
Okay, so my question to you is if we do get an O lineman, which I'm I'm team get an O lineman, who would you want to get? Say we were to get back up into the second round, who what wide receiver are you looking into wanting to get in the second or third round? Like is there anyone that catches your eye, like a Keon Coleman or a Johnny Wilson or Roman Wilson? Uh, Ricky Purcell, I like a lot. Rip. Okay, yeah, he's good. Um, he's really nice. Jerry Rice's son, Brendan, I like. There's a lot of good receivers, man. I mean, they, like, uh, what's his name? Might not be a first round pick necessarily. Uh, Walker, Dez, uh, Trez Walker from uh, yeah. North Carolina. Te- Tez Walker. Yeah, Tez Walker. Uh, yeah, um, 100%. No, and uh, Troy Franklin from Oregon. He might be a late yeah. one. Ladd McConkey, if he somehow falls out of the first, could be there. Like, there's too many good receivers. They can't all go in the first round. There's going to be some good players there on day two. Yeah, that's what I'm banking on. It's too much talent, so someone's going to have to drop. And another thing, uh, Jake, do you ever do mock drafts? Do you ever do your own mock drafts? Yeah, we do them on Fridays, typically with Cole Thompson. But I had to, I had to reschedule Cole for uh, Monday this week. So we're going to be doing a, a live mock on Monday. Okay, I'm going to make sure I tap in. Love to hear your insight. Thanks, V8. Appreciate the call, man. Drive safe. Uh, I've never been more convinced that Brendan Rice is about to be an awesome player. Hawk writes in, Brandon Rice, not good, shouldn't be spoken with good receivers. He's a fifth rounder at best. He's projected to go on day two, so he's not a fifth rounder. Keon Coleman is definitely intriguing because he had first round buzz for a while. Also, Jordan Leggett is another guy. I think his first name is Jordan. South Carolina receiver. I mean, there's nothing like it. Nothing like the draft, man. Nothing like it. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Appreciate everyone tuned in. We're up to 198 likes. Can we get over 300 by the end of the show? Hit the like button and help us. It's free. It takes a second. And when people gift as maniac memberships, you're more likely to get one based on the YouTube algorithm. Alan writes in, excited to call into the show again. Arguing with Jake brings me joy. You know what brings me joy, Alan? Doing this. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. We'll see you in five, Alan. More of your calls right now. Let's go to BMAC, who's on the line. Hello, BMAC. Hey, Chris. Uh, uh, I mean, hey, Jake, how you doing? Um, um, <laughs> I, yeah, uh, you know, you see the bottom of my thing here. Yeah, county is a bitch. Um, and I just want to say this. Hey, county. Is Dan Marino's a bad leader because he never won a Super Bowl? Is Drew Brees a bad leader because he went seven and nine for the, the, the majority part of, of his career? This guy is a I mean, not to throw a shot, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, I've got some questions about your safety position. Um, now, uh, now, a lot of people are, are, are saying that y'all need safety help, but do y'all think, like, what's your questions about Chuck Clark and Tony Adams? Do y'all think they are you, uh, do, do, do y'all think they are going to be your starting uh, safeties? I like Chuck Clark a lot. We didn't get to see it last year because he got hurt, but he's versatile. I think he's a good system fit. And I, I, I do like him a lot. I think Tony Adams is an ascending player. And you know, the, the one thing I will will say, though, is I think they're going to still try and bring back Ashton Davis. If you heard some comments from Robert Sala yesterday in an in-house interview he did with Eric Allen, he essentially said that they want to bring Ashton back. And if Ashton can't find a better deal, I think he will come back. So I think they're waiting on that. Yeah, I, I think uh, Ashton Davis. Um, uh, I think that's a be a good, uh, you know, re-signing for y'all. Uh, he did pick off Patrick Mahomes, by the way, in that Chiefs game. So I, I think, and then uh, he made a couple of good plays. So I, I think the, you know, um, I, I do think y'all need to draft another safety just to add depth. But I think the, I, I, I think Chuck Clark to me is more underrated. Um, um, I, I, I know he's old coming up ACL, but, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I think he's going to come back and provide a good, you know, uh, 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 playoff for y'all. So. Yeah, completely fair. Um, look, they, they, they've had a good off season so far. Uh, the biggest thing, as we all know, is the health of this team now, but you can say that about a lot of teams. 
A lot of teams. Wow, what a super chat from Jorge. This made my day, Jorge. You are incredibly kind, my man. Let's give you every sounder we have in the book to celebrate this one. A $100 super chat. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, yo. Thanks to Jorge. Big time, man. That is awesome. I, I truly appreciate it, man. We have the best listeners. The best listeners in this community. Also, well, uh, you know, I want to shout out uh, one of the listeners I met yesterday. So I'm at the Yankee game yesterday. I'm walking on the field beforehand, and I met one of the uh, executive chefs at Yankee Stadium. I want to give some love to uh, someone I met yesterday who came up to me, Nico. All right. He's a huge listener of the show. He watches all the Jet YouTubers, huge Jets fan, works for the Yankees in their hospitality department. I mean, we're going to get this guy to come out to L5 and start cooking up uh, quite the spread during tailgate season for the Jets. So I want to give some love to uh, Nico, who I met yesterday at Yankee Stadium, who recognized me and said hello. But also, once again, shout out to Jorge. $100 Super Chat, you kidding me? Big time, Jorge. If you got a comment or a question, just write it in. No Super Chat required. We will make sure we bring it up right away. Um. A lot of people celebrating the Jorge Super Chat. Hell yeah. You know what? We'll celebrate it some more right now. Judging. All right. Back to your call as we go. It looks like this guy has figured out his internet. JJ will give you another shot here. Why are you always driving, JJ? Why do you refuse to call us when you're not in your motor, ve uh, motor vehicle? Because when, uh, whenever I'm like free, I'm usually driving home. I live in New York City and I refuse to take the trains. So... Um, I'm usually driving home when I catch the uh, the show. Anyways, real quick, I have an announcement to make for um, the last caller, BMAC. Um, he called a couple of days ago, and he exposed me as not being a real Jets fan. He's absolutely right. Deep down, I am a Packers fan, and I'm starting a Packers YouTube channel. It's going to be called the BMAC Show. Um, <laughs> he inspired me. I want to give him, like, I want to give him other options because, like, he has nothing else to do than better than to just watch, you know, a Jake Asman Jets related content all day um even though he's a packers fan so uh, me and him are going to start bonding over our my new youtube channel um anybody else who is welcome <laughs> is all welcome to to come on over and watch this this new uh content that i'm going to be putting out so b mac thank you again um the release date is going to be april 32nd and i hope to see you there jj thank you honestly when you talk about big time rivalries in sports there's yankees red sox there's Duke, North Carolina. There's Michigan, Ohio State. There's JJ and B back. <laughs> There's Allen versus the entire chat. Tremendous. Snowball says, Jake, is there a mini bar in the new setup? Henny fridge. Uh that the, the, the Henny is set up. The mini bar is not. That's that's lower on my to-do list. I got a couch today, so the show was delayed today because I, I I had the the couch installation. All right, we finally have that. Things are coming together. But my wallet is taking a dent. So thanks again to Jorge for the super chat. That goes a long way, man. Moving ain't cheap, as everyone who's done it knows. Let's go to Rob the Jet fan. He's got a rivalry with Alan. What's up, Rob? Hey, Jake. What's going on, buddy? Um, did you wind up selling that couch in Houston? What did you wind uh, up doing with it? No, I, I donated it to uh, the maintenance staff at my old place in Houston because they, you know, they're great guys there. They helped me out, so I, I couldn't get anyone to buy the couch. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me do something nice for those guys because they're awesome. Nice thing to do, buddy. Well, what you give comes back tenfold. Believe me, always. But um, I'm giving a big shout out to uh, B Mac there. I love the way he ripped uh, Canty, and he ripped uh, our buddy JJ there, and. I kind of agree with uh, with BMAC. I I don't think JJ's a real Jet fan. I I think he's I think he's a phony. he's a phony. Nope, nobody's a fan like that and that negative. It just not even. I don't even think Allen's that negative. I think JJ beats him, to be honest with you. But you know that's just my opinion, and you know how far that gets you. Hey. But anyway, yeah, I wanted to call Jake, um, Jake because I was just livid. From what Canty said about Aaron Rodgers, I cannot believe he called him a cancer. That was way overboard. He crossed the line, big time. Crossed the line. I mean, 
I don't know what the heck he's talking about. Aaron's done nothing but prove that he's committed to the Jets, giving back $35 million, voted most inspirational, all these things we know, and all the people that you hear. I, you know, I was watching a couple things on YouTube. You got to see a lot of these people. They're like so like uh, like happy when they meet Aaron Rodgers now. They're like, wow, he's nothing what I thought he was. You know, he's such a nice guy and stuff. I was wrong about him. But yet, you know, the media always seems to pick on the Jets. This is part of the reason why I like to fly under the radar because I want to have a ginormous year this this year, uh, Jake, and I want to shove it up all these doubters and non-believers about the Jets and we're going to have the last laugh and we're going to kill these people we're going to we're going to be drinking the Hennessy we're going to be drinking the Tito's the champagne and we're going to shove it right up there you know what and you know I just cannot wait for that day Jake I mean other than going through another winter because I'm not a winter guy <laughs> other <laughs> than that if we wait till the Jets start but we're going to give it to him buddy J E T S Jets Jets Jets! Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Love it. Love it, Rob. We're going to stick it to them all. That's the plan. All right? There's going to be too much please, winning. Please, please. It's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Can you imagine us Jet fans being sick of winning? I'll never forget the call we got a couple of weeks back from Cheats fan. Who was like, yeah, you know, I like that all these teams are getting better. I like the challenge. <laughs> Imagine that. Crazy. Hey, we just got a new Patreon member. I love when this happens in the middle of a show because I see it and can shout the person out. Nikki D, who's watching the show, just signed up. It's just $5 a month to get all the bonus shows, all the bonus perks, Discord access, and much more. Patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show. If you sign up for the year, you save 15%. So check that out. Who's going to become an Asmaniac? No one has hit the join button during this show. I'm shocked. I figured Saturday would be the day of Asmaniacs coming together. Speaking of coming together, this guy always brings us together. Bobby Midnight's on the line. Hello, Bobby. Hey, you doing, Jake? My brother says hi. Mike says hi. Tell Mike I say hello. And is Chris Canty, did he play on my New York Giants? Is that the Chris Canty I'm thinking about? Yeah, he won a Super Bowl on your team. This guy is yeah, a that. cancer that's metastatic. Yeah, I think he got a big map because Aaron Rodgers is not a cancer. I agree with Rob from Riverhead that he is he uh, took a pay cut, right? $35 million. If he didn't do that, why would he become a cancer for? I am not very happy with Chris Canty. And I'm going to ask you this question a lot during the summer, okay? You're in New York now, right? I am. Have you seen Mr. Softy yet? I have not seen Mr. Softy, but I'm on the lookout. You know who I'm talking about, right? Oh, the ice cream man. Yes. I oh, love yeah. Mr. Softy. I miss it. Up here in Vermont, we don't get we don't get nothing up here. We can make our own, but we usually get it from the store. But I miss New York a lot. But I I guess what's on tonight too? Are you gonna watch it tonight? Oh, yeah. We'll be watching uh, the Final Four. We got a huge Islanders game for playoff positioning. Yankees back in action. I wish the Yankees played during the day today, Bobby. Why is tonight a night game? Wrestling, uh, WrestleMania is on tonight, too. Yep, yep. Wrestling's tonight. on. So, a yeah. lot happening. Yeah, I'm happy you're back in New York. Let's go, New York. Thanks, Bobby. Great call, as always. Jake Quest says, Mr. Softy is Chris Canty's nickname in the bedroom. Damn, got his ass. <laughs> Uh, Frankie says Jake has the best callers in the game. We do, man. We do. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no show quite like this one with our callers. It's tremendous. That we love that. We are going to do a show in the near future for first time callers only. We got to get some fresh blood on the line. All right, I look forward to that. Darren's up next on the program today. Darren, we're coming to you right when my computer freezes. So hold on one second. There we go. What's up, Darren? Hey, Jake, first off, uh, when you uh, do your, you know, videos outside the show, like you're trying to, StreamYard doesn't pick that up. Well, at least I'm not getting it. I don't what do you know mean, what do you mean when I do my videos? 
like when you send somebody to shadow room or you do whatever it doesn't seem like i get the uh audio i can see it but i can't uh i can't hear it i don't so, I don't so know you couldn't hear know. this you couldn't hear this into the shadow realm you go that's the problem with air rogers this guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Or here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the fuck up. You couldn't hear that, Darren? Nope. No I can, audio. I can I see it, but I can't problem. hear it. Well, let me ask the chat. Did everyone hear the latest Shadow Realm of Chris Canty right in the chat if you did? And if you I, did, I, I'm not talking about regular YouTube because I hear it if I'm watching regular YouTube. But when I get into the studio for the uh, stream yard, then I don't hear it. That might be a you problem. I guess in the studio, maybe you don't hear it then. You don't hear it when you're on hold. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, maybe. But that's not why I called in and I have no Jets take. Can you tell BMAC to clean up them dirty ass shoes under his TV? <laughs> Tell him to go see Bonesy, get some fresh shoes, and uh, let's go from there. All right. I, I, I Look, you have relayed the message to him, Darren. Thank you for that. <laughs> what a call. Uh, let's go to Edward. He's up next. What's up, Edward? How you doing there, Jake? Is that a Boomer jersey? No. This is a Ken O'Brien autograph. Oh, even better. Awesome. Check out the back. See the autograph? Nice. Nice. I figured out how to not get a delay. Holy shit. <laughs> Are you on Wi-Fi? Was that the trick? I don't know what the hell it is. Oh, I, I got an S23 Samsung. I mean, the last phone was some, like, track phone from Walmart, so I figured that was the issue. But it's good to be able to talk to you. Welcome back to New York City. Congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, you brought the thunder with you. And earthquakes, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> You know, a 4.8 in California is just like a, you know, <laughs> you know, it was really funny. I drive a truck for a living and I'm in the truck and I'm listening to Ryan on Jets talk. And right in the middle of his, of his talk, all of a sudden he's like, whoa, what the <laughs> hell was that? It was hysterical. Have, did you see that? I, I, I haven't seen the video. You know, it's funny. Oh, I, my really, God. I, I, I like I didn't uh, I I didn't feel it but either time I'm like the only one who didn't feel it. I think I was in the shower for the first one normally we would have been live on our show but I did an earlier show yesterday because I was going to the Yankee home home opener so everything was pushed up and I missed I missed it I could have been live too but I I didn't feel a thing I don't even I didn't even know what happened you're kind of an anomaly usually it's Jets Mets Islanders and you're like a Yankee fan which yep. is cool I like the I like the pinstripes you know they're they're all right. Well, now, now, uh, Edward, I have a question for you from someone in the audience. Yeah. Jeffrey wants to know, do you wear pants in the truck? Yes, I do. I'm just uh, lounging in my house. And if you notice, my bed's not made. Fuck me, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm too busy, man, to do all, all this stuff. I, got, I, I, I don't even want to be in the house today, but I got to change a coil in my car. And I'm just waiting to get it from Amazon because it's half price. Uh, I got, you know, you know, cylinder three has got a miss and it's a four cylinder car. So what are you going to do? Well, Edward, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call. Oh, did you like my underwear? I got my little red ones on today. <laughs> Edward, that, that, thanks for the call, man. I've got, I've got, we got the internet working for you. Uh, <laughs> God. I don't know how we come back from that one, people. That that was something. Uh, Chris writes it. Am I the only normal person here? You're a jet fan, Chris. You're not normal. None of us are. If we were normal, we wouldn't root for this goddamn football team. <laughs> JJ says nobody wants a new caller only show. The people need V Man every episode. You wrote no caller only. I'm not asking for no caller only, JJ. I want new callers. That that was the point. We, we, we want to encourage people who have never called the show before to call in. I have 37,000 subscribers. I know there's people out there who watch every day that are on the fence of calling, but maybe they don't. You know, maybe V-Man and uh, Chiefs fan intimidate them or Charles. I don't know. I want everyone to know that it's a judgment-free zone on this show. 
You know, typically we ask you to wear pants, but I guess we made the exception there for for Edward. <laughs> oh, the big fella with a super chat. Canty proves not every ex player deserves a platform. He's either a moron or looking for clicks, overrated as a player and a panelist. I, I think he crossed the line. And, I, you know, I met Chris. He happens to be a nice guy. And I'm not going to rip his playing career. Like he played in the NFL, it's an incredible accomplishment. Good for him. When you call someone a cancer, when there's no evidence of it, and in fact, it doesn't take much to do any ounce of research to tell you how factually incorrect that is. I think you cross the line. Period. Reminder, folks, we're going to be live in Las Vegas in less than a month for the NFL draft. Our mega cast is coming live from Circa Resort and Casino. It is never too early to book your stay at Circa for not only this summer, but for the football season. They have the largest indoor and outdoor sports book in the world. Ask any Asmaniac who was there last November for our big event around Jets Raiders weekend. It is the time of all times, and I'm excited to broadcast from there once again for the NFL Draft. We're going to be joined by special guests. We have giveaways we're going to be doing for prizes, including a signed Garrett Wilson photo with him, by the way, wearing the number five. It's not number 17. That's right. That's courtesy of my friends at ESPN New York. So we got a lot planned for that show. I'll announce some of the bigger name guests that are confirmed and set to join me on the mega cast when we get a little closer. But shout out to Circa for being a part of our mega cast. And of course, book your stay at Circa if you're going to Vegas. I mean, look at this sports book. Look at this view. All right. It's as good as it gets. CircaLasVegas.com. Promo code. I used to have a promo code. I don't know if it still works. But anyway, <laughs> just go to CircaLasVegas.com and message me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to walk you through everything about Circa. Check it out. And make sure you guys watch the draft with us on YouTube as we'll be live for the entire three-day event on the channel. Daniel Murphy is up next. Murph, the Mets could really use you, my man. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, people are asking me to come out of retirement at this point. It's getting pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know how am I supposed to top that. Am I supposed to call on a Speedo next or something? Is that <laughs> is that how we do that? I don't know. Well, you know, as much as uh, some might like that, I don't know if uh, YouTube uh, and their rules and regulations will go for that one. So I, I, I appreciate the gesture. <laughs> well, I wasn't really planning on it anyway, but that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, um, there was a couple of things I wanted to call about. Uh, first of all, I'll ask you the same question that I asked uh, Jets Chaos last night. I called in on there, and uh, <clears throat> he, I – Basically, my question is, and it's and it's just like your personal buy, like your how you feel about it. It doesn't. I don't. I, I don't need to know what you think the Jets feel about it. But like, when it comes to evaluating prospects, and obviously you and I, we're not in the interviews. We don't know what's said, and and all these different things or whatever. We just hear what's reported to us and different things. But how how much do you weigh character in a prospect, like high character, like? team leader type stuff into your prospects as compared to talent, because you do have prospects that are just uber talented, crazy athleticism and, and, and things like that. But there may, there may not necessarily be high character. I mean, we, we keep hearing all these things about these guys speeding and getting in car wrecks and things like that. And just doing all these wild, these wild things. But uh, I just kind of wondered like from, from your personal like basis, do you do you put that very heavily on your prospects? Like, would you take a guy that's more high character, but maybe not quite as talented, over a guy that's uh, more talented, but uh, you know, a little questionable character? Yeah, I, I think if all things are equal, you take the guy with higher character. I think if someone's talent is so great, but there are major character concerns, I I think it depends on where you're taking said player, right? Like, I don't think there's a golden rule. I think every situation is different. I think the position is different too, like. If a guy is like, a, you know, a, a super high character guy and he plays a premium position versus a guy who's maybe, let's say, a quarterback who is talented, but there's red flags there. Like, I'd rather take the guy with higher character because I know that guy's going to put the work in, you know, and like not be uh, a bad teammate. And I think character matters more on a team like the Jets because it's New York and there's more pressure and eyeballs and scrutiny that comes with it. So. Like, I think that matters, man. Like, that, that's what I love so much about guys like Garrett and Brees and Sauce. Like, these guys could have been ripping the quarterback situation and, 
you know, getting into it with fans and they really don't, they take the high road. They say the right things. Like, you know, the, the, the C should be slapped on Garrett Wilson this year and sauce Gardner um, for this upcoming season. Like both guys are unbelievable leaders. And like, I, I think that matters, man. Like Jermaine Johnson's a credibly high character. So I don't think there's an exact rule for it. I think, I think the jets do evaluate that and factor that in. If you notice Douglas has a history of drafting a lot of guys, who were voted college team captains. That's one of the things he looks for in like intangibles. He likes guys that were voted team captain um, in his draft picks. Like most of the Jets draft picks were captains of their college teams. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I, cause I, I think that like a bad character, like what do they say? The bad, the bad apple ruins the bunch. Right. Like I, and I think that in a place like, like you said, in New York, like that's, it's it's even more important in New York because the cameras are on twenty four seven and it's just it's pretty wild. But yep. uh, the other thing is actually the main reason I called in is my son Jace. He wanted to do a Jets chant on the show. So you ready, buddy? Yeah. Let's go. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Yeah, love it. I will say this. Uh, someone noted that your son David wrote in Daniel. Your kids well behaved while Dad's on the phone with Jake. How about that? He's a, he's an awesome kid, man. He's awesome. We just went to baseball practice, and then he came to the gym with me and tolerated me. You know, he hung out at the gym with me and tolerated it the whole time. He even worked out with me a little bit. So, How about yeah, he's, he's excellent, man. He's Couldn't ask for a better kid, for sure. I love it. That's awesome, Daniel. Thanks for the call, my man. And, you know, he'll be, I hope he has, you know, a 10-plus year major league career like you did. Tremendous. Uh, Jennergy's on the line. This might be a first-time caller. Jennergy, is this a first-time call? Yeah. Hey, Jake Aslan fans, what up? I'm fangirling a little bit. Not going to lie. I'm on the Jake Aslan show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. And you're on our Discord. So, like, you, you, like we interact all the time, but you've never called in before. Here we go. And I wanted to call in the other day, but between freaking torrential downpours, earthquakes, all kinds <laughs> of crazy seismic events happening in the city, I was like, I need to call one time. I'm going to call in. I was like, Aurora, first of all, I don't know if you see my heading there. Aurora needs to be the president of the 4% club <laughs> and growing. Because her last take, I mean, she's very knowledgeable. Her football IQ is actually pretty amazing, I would have to say. When she was talking about playmakers, I was like, yes, Aurora, keep going. Her, Lini, um, I think Carly, I don't know. All the women that are uh, supporters of Jake Asman, I have to say you guys have been the inspiration for me to just like watch. Been a Jets fan. Actually, I think I mentioned this in the chat about when did you become a Jets fan or how or who inspired you to become a Jets fan? Of course, you mentioned your dad. I feel a lot of us, it's been our fathers because uh, definitely it's been my dad. Uh, he's a hardcore Jets fan and Islanders, Yankees, Knicks. So we have a lot of the same, you know, favorite teams in common. But like, seriously, though, like being a Jets fan as a female Jets fan is like it's a blessing and a curse. (laughs) (laughs) It's a mixed bag. Definitely a mixed bag. It's like it, it, it will hopefully all be worth it this season. Right. All the pain, all the nonsense we deal with. It yeah. will hopefully all be worth it. That's that's the hope. No, it's true. It's like you even mentioned what was the one the last show you just did. You were talking about the Knicks and even the Yankees home opener. I was like, we need to just play Jay Z's. It's a hard knock life because that's literally a New York sports fan. Like that could be the like literally with the Jets last season and the Knicks now trying to man make a comeback and they're just running out of steam. I feel so bad because. And I said this, too, in the chat. I mean, Brunson has been phenomenal. He is the GOAT of that team. But someone else has to step up. We've had too many injuries. Like, you got to get some more people involved and just, like, I mean, I mean, we're diehard. Like, we fight. We're fighters. And I think this, I feel like that's just the same character, even with the Jets. Like, you, uh, the last person who was talking, Daniel Murphy, he was talking about the character of the player. I feel like the Jets know who they are. And I love that you mentioned that about Sauce and Garrett. They're like, for being so young, they're amazing as far as their personalities, their attitude. Dealing with so much adversity in in that season, last season, it was like, and the way they speak. I mean, I just saw, I was looking at another podcast with Sauce. um, And he was talking, I think it was The Pivot. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And he was just talking about like dealing with Nicole Hartman and that whole thing. And he was just like, you know, I don't need to go there. I know when, you know, to step back and not just be all, you know, he, they just seem so mature. They know who they are. I think that's what I love about New York sports teams. We know who we are. We have, we're like, we're gritty. Like, we don't play. Like, I'm from the Bronx, so don't mess with me. Don't mess with my teams. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm glad you called in and hopefully, you know, the 4% female audience only continues to grow yep. and it's being led by you and every other amazing caller and discord member that you mentioned. So I, I'm excited, but if Aurora is going to be the president of the 4% club, what's your role? Are you the vice president? Are you the secretary of something? Hey, yeah, I could be the secretary. I'll be the, the vice, whatever. We'll, we could call partner. And Lini, no, Lini needs to be up in there too. That's what I'm saying. We're the <laughs> Lini's got a high, a high cabinet position for sure. I mean, yeah, I... yeah man, yeah. We need to keep. We got to figure out some more re recruiting tactics. We're I like... love it. Hey, I know there's more female uh, <laughs> listeners out there. We need all yeah. the ladies to call in. I love it, Jennergy. Great job. Yes, absolutely. Take care. Tre tremendous. There we go. That's a first time caller. And while that was going on, Jeffrey decided, hey, it's Saturday. Five people need to be an as maniac right now so let's see who got a membership the following people did scott foster alfonso stackhouse mc Maisie, david d and j dubs you were just gifted an as maniac membership by jeffrey shout out to jeffrey great great gesture incredibly kind i mean we had a hundred dollar super chat now someone just spent 25 dollars to send some memberships people's way unbelievable money 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 <laughs> Incredible. And shout out to all our female callers, even the ones who don't call in. But great to have Gender G call in there. And she's based in the Bronx. We'll see her at some home games this year. Alfonso says, smash the like button. He just became a channel member. Love that. We're at 273 likes. Can we get over 300? Max Power says, I miss Kay Adams and good morning football. Kay was great on that show. Uh, I, I will say, Jamie Ertle does a great job. But who knows what's happening with good morning football now? That show's in flux. It's moving back to L.A. and not all the cast members are necessarily moving cross country to be a part of the show. Um, let's see. I feel like, by the way, Jennergy should be like the like secretary of defense for the 4% club because she's got that Bronx attitude. She won't let anyone get away with nothing. Back to the calls we go. An OG is on the line. Southern Jet up next. Hello, Rich. Hey, how you doing? Uh, not bad. <clears throat> Jesus. Um, I hadn't, uh, I saw Jennergy called and I'm. And then she mentioned she's from the Bronx and I said, Jesus Christ, you missed a great name, Jenny from the Bronx. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I, um, I, I think that one's taken, but that's, uh, that's not. That's no, not yeah, right. yeah, for a while anyway, we'll find out. There's some shit going on in the news, but um some uh, things I, I texted you, uh, Eddie, uh, he's, I watch, <laughs> I watch the games with him at the Jets bar here in Raleigh. He's part of our, our, does he wear pants when you watch the games with him? Let me put it this way. He's our V man. And, <laughs> and, 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 but, but we love him. He, we love him. He doesn't have the, the biggest filter in the world, but I don't either. So we get along, but Eddie's a great guy, but yeah, he's our V man. Um, speaking of V-Man, I was thinking about this the other day. He has such great uh, Puerto Rican stories and culture and recipes, and but he his subtitle is Port Italian. I don't think I've ever heard one Italian culture story or recipe from him. So we could we have a whole untapped reservoir there. A V-Man stories. You're right, because it seems like he only wants to talk about his Puerto Rican heritage. You're okay. right. I, I want V-Man to come on and start giving me, like, you know, the Tommy DeVito son. Yeah, I, I would get if he only wanted to, but he labels Port Italian, so he's obviously proud of it. So, so but because we have a whole, you know, half of 50% more great uh, V-Man stories. The other thing was uh, uh, about the weather. Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're bringing – what you're really bringing, Jake, is – the storm is coming, you know, you're bringing all this, this horrible weather, but it means a jet storm is coming. And if I'm not mistaken, 
didn't that didn't the epicenter wasn't it pretty close to Florham Park? It was in New Jersey. Someone made the joke that Makai Becton fell down, and I felt like that was uncalled for. <laughs> well, well, it was near Trump's golf course, which is very near Florham Park. So I think it was. I, so you're you're really you're really doubling up here. And um, the the other thing was the uh, I'm reading my yeah the Bowers. That was the last thing I was talking about. Oh no, no, no caller. The the person who said no caller. Yeah, it'd be great. You get on for two hours, and maybe you can read a couple of chapters with Joe Namath's biography, and uh, <laughs> you know that that'd be you know we could maybe tap new un, un, unseated ground. Yeah, I'm hoping he meant new call. I think that's what he meant. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I just yeah, I couldn't pass up that test. Look, but, I talk for a living, but no callers would be tough to do that for two hours. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the Bowers thing. Yeah, you know, I heard Gary again. You know, he's another no filter guy, um, which is cool. Um, the the thing that just keeps boggling me with the Bowers thing, I've been watching football a long time, and 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 Conklin for the last two years with the shittiest quarterbacks, like I just texted, since the history of playing football with a pig's bladder, has has was wonderful the last couple of years, and I can imagine it's going to be better this year. So I don't see. The, I know he says he plays a different position, but nah. He's going to fill. The, you only have so many people you can put on the field. So you know, if he's drafted, it's going to replace Bowers. To be quite honest with you, or it's going to it's going to make Rucker be a blocker and and all that shit. And 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 I think Conklin. We have to give Conklin a chance with Rodgers and all those other weapons on the field because I loved Conklin in Minnesota. I mean, when he was in Minnesota, he was. I was shocked that that they let him go. It must have been a cap issue, but. You know, um, I think I actually think Conklin will be a top 10 tight end in football this year because he's going to be Rogers safety valve. Well, I could tell you this, Rich. Great call. Conklin the last two years is top 10 to both catches and yards amongst tight ends. And that's with eight different quarterbacks, all of which are various levels of average to God awful. Right. Like Mike average, Mike White, I think is average. Everyone else, bad, god awful, historically bad, shouldn't be on an NFL team, like Tim Boyle level bad. And Conklin had top ten yards and receptions the last two years. It's why, like, I'd be more open to the Brock Bauer boys if the Jets had like no tight ends. They have two good tight ends. Like Ruckert, I think has so much talent, and now he sat for two years and learned. This is where he takes a step forward. By the way, congrats to Jeremy Ruckert, the pride of Long Island. I think he got married today. I think I saw something from the Jets on that and on Instagram. All right, folks, Jorge has now submitted another $100 super chat. All right, here's a live look at me tonight. Wow, Jorge, you're unreal. New York is expensive, LOL. Incredibly kind, my man. I truly appreciate it. Cha-ching. Coin jangling. Cha-ching. Coin jangling. I mean, Jorge, how much money did you win on uh, that BS call against UConn last night? Uh, you 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 put you put your life savings on Iowa money line. Is that where all this money is coming from? Unbelievable. Would you you know have like a ten team parlay that hit? Unbelievable. Thanks, Jorge. Appreciate you, man. M. Lopez writes in: Would you do a Yanks or Knicks channel of this caliber? If I had more hours in the day, I would love to. It is impossible to replicate what we do with the Jets and the amount of hours and prep and things we do into this channel to do that version of it with other teams. Now, I will say I am going to start doing more videos on the Knicks and the Yankees and other big New York sports topics when I can, especially now that I'm based here. It's easier for me to do it. Like I did a Yankee recap video yesterday from the press box at Yankee Stadium because I was there. We did a Nick video, kind of in-show, reacting to the Randall news. So I'm going to try and produce more content. Uh, it is just difficult because with my three radio jobs and making sure the Jet stuff comes first because of my responsibility to the audience and my sponsors, it's tough to replicate exactly that with the Yanks or Knicks. But I want to do more. I do. And obviously, when you hear me on ESPN New York, you'll get plenty of that. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're about to take a phone call from a man who is in Europe, not just in Europe, but he is in the country 
of France. He is in the city of Paris. Craig, who's normally in Australia, joins us now. Hello, Craig. Mate, how are you? Everything good? I, I, I mean, don't, I, no one cares about me right now, Craig. How are you? <laughs> I'm amazing. I've stepped out from a business dinner because this. I saw you go live. This is my chance to get in. I'm ticking these continents off the list. It has to be has to be done. So uh, I've got to race back in there, but it's done now. I head to the Czech Republic on Monday. I'm going to try and call you from Prague as well. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do, instead of just every continent, let's just do every country. Um, so I've brought Asmania to Paris. Um, they have no idea here. No one speaks English here. They do whatever the hell they want here. It's a crazy place. Absolutely <laughs> crazy place. <laughs> I've just never seen anything like it. Uh, but uh, uh, tra travel's all good fun. And I'm counting now. It's three weeks until we get to New York City. Uh, and, um, you know, I heard uh, Jenna G say she's in the Bronx. Well, we'll be at Yankee Stadium Thursday the 9th at night. So we're going to have to organise it. Uh, great name, Jenna G, by the way. Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, we've got to increase this 4%. Something's got to be done. Yes. So going to try and going to try and get my wife to call in. I did. I did have my daughter as a special guest at one point. I think. So I don't know. I don't know if that counts as a you know, extra percentage point or not. I'm not really sure. Hey, you know, we'll but, count it. You know, I, hopefully YouTube accounts for that, right? They just tell me my uh, my algorithm is four percent female. So I hope that's counted. That's what they say. Okay. Very good. How's the apart? How's my apartments? As far as I'm concerned, I'm living vicariously <laughs> through you at this point. Have you had Chipotle uh, next door? Has it happened? <laughs> I've only had a one so far, believe it or not. I've been, uh, you know, I have so many friends wow. that live here and I've been trying to see as many as possible. So, but I, I've had plenty of oh. pizza, Craig. I've had my bacon, egg, and cheeses. Good. I've had my cream cheese yep. bacon. So, I, but I, I mean, you've no I idea how jealous I am. You've no idea. <laughs> Dude, uh, you you'll li get, you'll you're living it. the dream, man. You're living the dream. You're right where I want to be, exactly where I want to be. Uh, so, and I can live through you. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. I love it. Now, tell us about the food in Paris. Have you had any snails yet? French fries? What else? You know, baguettes? Is that that's French? I think. I draw the line at escargot. I can't do it. Um, if I was tricked, I'd probably eat it and say that's amazing. But I, I can't bring myself to do it. So lots of steak, lots of very rich, rich food they have here. Some croissant and so on. So no, it's it's awesome. Uh, it, look, every different place you go to is awesome. You meet interesting people. You have great foods. And uh, it's yeah, it's it's, it's got to be done. And I'll, I've got to spread as mania. You understand? Some, <laughs> someone has to do it, and it turns out to be me as it happens. Hey, Craig, three weeks, and I'll I'll be at a Yankee game with you and the crew, and we got the dinner. Yeah, party. man, can't wait to see you. Got dinner, epic. We're gonna go to the uh, Bonesy Shoe Shop. It's gonna see Neil sell shoes. It's gonna be crazy. Yes. That's all I'm thinking about at this point. <laughs> so I better get back to work, man. Thanks for taking my call. Love to all the Jets family. Family, can't wait to see everyone. Craig, you're the legend, man. You're the best. Enjoy Paris. Safe travels. Love that. Craig is the coolest guy, man. Someone wrote in the comments, international man of mystery. Spot on. Guy's a pilot, a surgeon. Who knows what he does? Unbelievable. He's calling us from South Korea. He's calling us now from Paris. He's called us from so many different locations. It's incredible. Hawk says, bro slid out of a business dinner in France to talk Jets real quick. I love it. That's why we have the best fans, man. Jennergy says, yes, Craig, Henny, Yankees game, let's go. Yeah, May 9th, let's do it. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the game. We got, we'll do a big pregame hangout. We'll go to Billy's beforehand. We'll, we'll show Craig a, a true Yankee fan night out for all my fellow Yankee fans. I tried to go to Billy's before the game yesterday. I just didn't have enough time because I was trying to get down on the field, which I was lucky enough to do. By the way, that was the first time I've ever been on the field at Yankee Stadium, believe it or not. Been on the field at City Field before. Been on the field MetLife. Been on the field. I've been on the field. I think at every New York arena or stadium, besides, ironically, Yankee Stadium. Uno Jets writes in with a super chat. A C equals twelve and five, no doubt. Hey, from your lips to God's ears, Uno. I do think they can do it. Maybe everyone's healthy, but who knows? Who knows? Chris says, yes, Asmund tailgate at Yankee Stadium. Let's go. May 9th, we're going. Yankees, Astros. It's a Thursday. So we're going. I'll make sure I'm there. 
and we will. And if uh, I, I'll get with Craig, I'll figure out ticket wise if people are buying tickets in the same section. But if anything, we will do a pregame bar hop style tailgate at Billy's or Stan's, probably Billy's. I'm a Billy's guy. Um, Johnny says, I'm pretty sure Craig's a CIA agent. He might be. Pittsburgh Mike's watching the program. He says, Jake, I'm currently enjoying a lovely bowl of Chipotle. Cheers, my friend. Cheers to you. Hopefully you went half chicken, half steak, Pittsburgh Mike. All right. Sean says, love the hat. Shout out to Ricky NY. He gifted me this hat um, around the holidays. So I don't, I, I had to, it says New York on it, right? And I just moved to New York after six years in Texas. So I had to, I had to rock it. Jorge says, Jake, you guys keep sleeping on my boy. Taj Washington went to two USC games. He was our guy for sure. I like him a lot. Obviously, Brendan Rice is the guy getting a lot of attention. But I, I, I didn't watch every game of USC, so Will Parkinson could talk about it. He's a USC fan. We'll have Will on soon, by the way. He'll be part of our draft cast, too. Let's go to Dano and then Keith, our next two callers. What's up, Dano? I can't hear you, Dano. No sound. Can't hear you. Now, do you, can you give us some hand signals on your point? Maybe like Aaron Rodgers throwing touchdowns, Garrett Wilson catching them. That's your prediction. We'll see if we get Dano figured out. Let's get a Keith. Keith is on the line. He's called in. What's up, Keith? Hey, Keith. I mean, hey, Jake. Huh? Do you know how many times I've been trying to sign on here that I've never been able to sign on, and today was the lucky day? I've been a – I used to ride the number seven train as a kid and go out and see Richard Todd. I was at that 81 game. I in Miami saw for the Mud Bowl, Keith? What? You were in Miami for the Mud Bowl? No, no, no. The game at uh, in 1981 at, at Chase Stadium. Which, which the, game? The Miami game. When we came back and beat the Giants, like 16 to 12, 16 to 15. Okay. I thought you were talking about you were at the Mud Bowl, the A.J. Dewey game. No, 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 no. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to say that my father was a diehard Giants fan. But he always provided season tickets at Shea Stadium for me as a kid to say, what team do you like? He didn't force me to be a Giants fan. I grew up with Joe Namath. I grew up with Bob Greasy. I watched those games. You can't write that in a book. Yes, you can. But at the same time, you know, I, man, Jake, you're, you, you, you know, between you and Boy Green or, or Boy Green and a couple other guys, I really don't listen to these podcasts. I find that they're a waste of time. It's like I got something better to do with my time. But here I'm glued to get on to your show in the morning. And it's like, Boy Green starts at 8.30. You start at 9. And maybe you need to get up at 7.30. Welcome <laughs> to New York. I used to live on 35 East 85th, which was right off of 3rd Avenue. Nice. And Good area. You know, I used to ride the number seven train as a as a teenager, and my father trusted me. What happened to those days? And, you know, it all's changed now. Life's different. But at the same time, you know, and when Jimmy Hoffa was valued to be buried underneath you know, a giant stadium, um, my father was a Teamsters union representative. Um, and, and you think about all those old days and, you know, these last two weeks of listening, I watch a show every day and listening to the hoopla. And it's like, where do these people come up with this stuff? 
Um, I think they're trying to generate revenue. It's on YouTube. Because at the end of the day, nothing else matters. I was at the Grateful Dead concert in 1976 at Jersey Jam 2. My cousin represented, um, you know, a, a group of editors from um, whatever. And uh, we watched the guy jump off the Coke sign. I mean, the Pepsi sign. And he died. And they shut down the Meadowlands for like, what, two years now. Some of you guys go back long enough to remember that. And I don't know where life takes you sometimes. I'm... I'm, I'm you know, I'm going through my own personal battles. I'm, I'm in my fifth round of chemo. I've been doing this for 13 years on and off. Um, I'd love to raise my hand here once in a while. I just didn't find myself affordable to be able to do it. Um, and I'm blessed today. I got on to the Jake Asman show. Well, Keith, thank you so much for calling in, man. And obviously wishing you uh the best in your recovery and you know 13 rounds of chemo you said that's crazy but keep fighting man no, no, no. five round five rounds over 13 years okay five yeah i mean just it's a testament to you keith appreciate it and you know f cancer right hey, keep keep going and that's what we do well said keith call back anytime glad you can figure out how to do it that was awesome all the best to you keith great call and I hope for your sake you get to watch the Jets in another Super Bowl, all right? I know you, I know, I know you uh, said you grew up watching Namath, but I'm sure you were young. You'd like to see another Super Bowl. You've certainly paid your dues. Back to the calls we go. Let's go to Dano, see if we can hear him this time. What's up, Dano? Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Nice. You know what, dude? I'm on the iPad, and then my phone wanted to connect to my AirPods, too. So, yeah. Anyways, um... Someone said uh, your segment thingies don't have sound, but when you're backstage, like when you do them, it pops up on the little screen. Click for sound. So they just, you just have to click that. Yeah. There you go. Well done. Um, I update my soundboard. Not all my drops are loud. It's a, it's StreamYard's very annoying, but I saw your comment. So we're updating that because I have, I have all these different drops I'm going to play. And uh, I, I'm still going to add an actual soundboard where I could like, Press a button and stream our notes to play it. So that's the next step in the evolution of the production of the show. Dude, you being a radio guy, that just makes so much sense. Like, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't mean to be a dick whenever I throw things like that down there. I'm just like, as a you know, you don't watch your own show. So, like, you know, figure I'd give you some what I see from it. I, I, I appreciate all the feedback. It's helpful. Um, I do love that idea of having like a, a show with first time callers that I think would be awesome. Um, to counter that, I think it'd also be awesome to have like a show where you have the like best callers, but not one at a time, like have them like a panel of you, you and like throwing out questions to some of them. I, I just think that'd be cool. I, um, I don't know if we'd be able to get a word in with some of our callers. Well, see, you would have the power to mute people, and <laughs> I think that would be key. <laughs> um, as far as uh, did everywhere online, I see uh, Rogers doesn't use tight ends, don't get powers because of that. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, but like, the research is there. Like he has in the past. But my main thing is like, if you put Conklin. Anywhere in Rogers' past, I think he's the best pass catcher he ever would have had at tight end. So, like, would you have used some of those guys he had? Like, bring bring Jermichael Finley forward to now. Like, would you complain that he's not getting targets? I wouldn't. <laughs> Dana, I, I, I'm, uh, I hear your point. I'm just laughing because – Demon well, Dane. <laughs> well, 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 I hear your uh... – well, while I hear your audio, like I can understand you. Every time you talk, there's like a weird like burp or like a fart like noise that's coming out every <laughs> other word. And the comments are just destroying you right now. So I have to just laugh because Thank you. And we wonder why people don't call in for the first time. <laughs> I should have called it up. Oh my god. I mean, I just raised out of these comments. This call is haunted. What's wrong with the sound? 
Is Dano trying to give us secret message? Demons are intercepting his call. Dano's headset's coming in and out. There's a frog in his room. Dano's audio has gas. Is someone playing a vinyl record backwards? <laughs> uh, I hope that doesn't discourage people from calling in, but that was, that was tremendous. Uh, let's go to Mr. Bonesy. He's in the shoe store. Bones. Hello, Bones. Uh, Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. <laughs> that was How are we doing? Uh, nothing. That was really funny. I thought it was some type of like, you know, a secret message that was going on. Like he was spitting out letters every two seconds. But uh, uh, look, we know, we know the jet saying is all gas, no break. Dano <laughs> took it literally. And you know what? Good thing you love Dano because normally when someone has messed up uh, stuff, you're like, peace, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you gave him some good time on that. I love Dano. He tried. It just, you know, he, he was passing gas apparently. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. You know, shout out to Keith and all the old school guys that are still here, still waiting with all of us that haven't even come close to waiting that amount of time for uh, for a championship run, let alone a winning season. And uh, I, I feel like with if, if Rodgers is healthy, man, we still haven't experienced it, and it's going to be beautiful. Uh, I... I still have in my head the touchdown he threw to Garrett in preseason. I know it's just one pass and it's just one play, but just that type of, you know, that quick turn, just not even looking. The defender doesn't even have a time to turn his head. Like that's the type of beauty I can't wait for. Um, we, we haven't even felt it yet. We still, it sucks because I feel like we're still talking about it from last year, but Guys like Keith and Southern Jet and Neil and all, all my old school guys, like, it, we're so due. It, 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 we're so due. And uh, patience, it's coming. I feel hey. it. It's coming. And, uh, you know, shout out to shout out to and all my crew today, Dano and everybody calling in. This has been a – I love I love the, the – I'm helping people on the floor. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just laughing. Sometimes you're like, like looking at me, like I'm like laughing at something with them, and I'm like tying a shoelace, and I, I gotta like, like miss it. Maybe, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lefty knot. Sorry, I didn't go through. Like, I'm <laughs> laughing at my own jokes. Like, oh, I forgot someone, someone really had me, had me. I think it was, I think it was V Man's call, but uh, I don't know. V Man's outfit today was an all timer. <laughs> I do want to hear about his, his Italian heritage because he's pretty uh he's pretty strong with the Puerto Rican poppy. So yeah, I, I would like I, I'm going to make that request to him next time he calls. I'm going to say you have to talk about your Italian heritage for at least five phone calls in a row. And yo, Murph's kid sitting in the car being so well behaved. I mean, if that was my kids, you guys know they're peeking their heads in. Dang, dang. It's like, yeah, oh my God, give me a second. This kid was waiting to do the Jets chant. That was that was impressive. Shout out to Murph. <laughs> I love it. Bones, what time you get out? What time you get out of work today on the shoe store? Five o'clock, baby. I'm on the train on my way home. Gonna watch the end of the Mets lose on my phone because they suck. <laughs> oh man, did you hear that Gary um the, the Gary Cohen thing when he was talking about us hitting rock bottom already? I think yeah. it was like we were we were uh, no hitted. Oh my god, man. I can't even the, the Knicks too. Last night I have a couple buddies that went on a little mini road trip. They went to Chicago and then they're going to the Bucks game. It's like how do we we needed that game? I hate when like no name guys have their career game against us. It happened. You know, it happened. Jalen Green. Well, jo Josh Hart getting Bunker. ejected early completely ruined the whole game. Like, it just changed everything. So, I mean, the, the, the Knicks, look, they got to get OG back playing healthy and it just make the best of the no Randall situation. That's all they could do. It's tough. Yeah. Shout out to Jalen Brunson, my MVP, my superstar. Always. Well, Bonesy, good luck with uh, the next hour and eight minutes of your uh, shoe salesman shift today, all right? Hopefully, hopefully you go the whole time, bro. <laughs> I appreciate you, Bones. Legend. Hey, as long as the super chats keep flowing, man. Dan NY with a super chat. Most immediate jet impact, neighbors, Rome, or Bowers? 
I think neighbors one, Rome two, Bowers three. Like who who's gonna be the best player right away? That'd be the order. I don't know how you could order it differently unless you think Rome's better than neighbors. Some do, that's fair. But I think it has to be the receivers ahead of the tight end until proven otherwise. Name me the tight end that comes in that's ever been drafted that high that has that type of impact. Neighbors could be what Garrett Wilson was for the Jets in year one. He went offensive rookie of the year. He's that type of player. Back to the calls we go. Let's go to Mac Stills, who's up next on the show. Hello, Mac. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Mac? How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm from upstate New York. I've been a free game Jets fan since probably about 95, 96. I got in just before Neil O'Donnell got on the team. Oh, what, what a uh, great and signing he was. Yeah, he got Tennessee to the Super Bowl against uh, the Rams there. I wish we would have kept him. I thought we would have beat Denver if we kept him. Vinny was better than O'Donnell, though. Yeah. They were the same, though. They both would throw them interceptions right at the last minute and kill you in the game. It was like, come on. Par- Parcells couldn't stand O'Donnell, though. Like, uh, I know. He had something with him. Yeah. There was something going on there. Yeah, it must have been a little too arrogant or something for him. I love your show, though. Great show. Thank you. Are you a first-time caller, Mac? I don't recognize yeah, first-time caller. Yeah. I love freaking King Lowski. He kills me. <laughs> I, listen, I listen to the AFC roundtable, and you ought to hear him on there. Oh, it's the funniest thing. He gets TD, the Dolphins guy, get going, and, oh, man, he just talks right over him every time. It kills me. He's the best. He's great. He's great. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Max, are you upstate New York? You're going to try to get to any games this year? Yeah, I hope so. I just lost my car recently, so we're in the shopping for a new one. But All I've right. been to a Mets game. I just haven't been to a Jets game yet. Well, this year we make it happen, and you stop by L5 to uh, hang out beforehand and tailgate with us, all right? That'd be sweet. Mac, you're the man. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, first-time caller, Mac. Long-time listener, first-time caller, says Jenner G, who also called in for the first time. We've had a lot of first-time callers. It's been awesome. It's been a great show. Scott Foster writes in, Jake, today's show's been legendary. I would agree. I mean, what's better than Kay Adams giving us advice how to deal with Jet fan trauma? leading into some epic phone calls from a lot of our regulars, some first time callers, Edward called in without any pants. Tremendous. <laughs> Ali's up next on our show. Hello, Ali. Hey, how's it going, man? What's up, man? Are you a first time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I kind of joined in on the bandwagon too. So I, I love it. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thanks. Um, honestly, I've been watching you since like the 2022 draft and, uh, it was, that's kind of when I started like getting back into the jets after like, they hired Gase and everything. I kind of stopped watching football for a while, but really, uh, but but Colin Cowherd told me that Adam Gase is a great coach, <laughs> you know? and Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh. Yeah, no, exactly. But no, I don't want to take too much time. I just wanted to say I've been listening to you for a while and uh, just keep up the great work. Hey, Ali, appreciate it, man. Thanks, awesome man. call. I'm glad you made it. Appreciate that. Let's keep rolling. Speaking of awesome callers, Johnny's up next. Hello, Johnny. What's up, Jake? Hey, man, uh, 100th time caller, you know, just chilling here. Hey, <laughs> it's a dope, uh, real awesome uh, calling show today, man. All the people and the energy, she really brought the energy over here. So hopefully we get like you know, more ladies calling in. I think you should do an all ladies call in though. See how it go. It'd be kind of cool to get the. Um, I can think of four or five that would call, but I we we would need more than that. You know, we we really we got to like build up our four percent staple. And because like here's the thing, four percent of the audience might be female, but not four percent of the female audience is calling in. You know. I mean, I get the wife you to do it, and probably get Mr. Bonesy's wife you to call in. All right, yeah, we can get well. That that would be a funny concept. We get Neil's wife, your wife. <laughs> Owns his wife. We get all the wives to call in. Yeah. Damn, they're about to tell all the damn inside of all the guys that call in and everything. Actually, be a really, really good uh, call-in show, man. But, um, hey, quick question, right? Because we're around the same age. Were you a Dipset or the Locks fan? 
Dipset or a Lox fan? Uh, Dipset, I guess, if I had to pick. All right, that's cool. I appreciate you, bro. Hey, WrestleMania tonight, man. Are you part yeah. of the Who you got? I, I'm not going to pretend like I have a feel. I just know Cody Rhodes needs to finish his story, and I'll just keep saying that to everyone. Well, I'll tell you this. His story is going to end today because the chapters of the bloodline will keep going. <laughs> that's the bottom line, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Johnny, I appreciate you, man. You know, I did hear some rumblings, though, that obviously The Rock, Cody, that's the, the huge storyline, Roman Reigns, all that. But I did hear some rumblings of Stone Cold Joe Douglas being there. <laughs> Just saying. Let's get rolling with the calls. Jonathan's up next. Hello, Jonathan. What's up, man? Uh Thanks for everything you do. I'll try to make this real quick. Uh, first, uh, definitely need to get a resume over to Craig. Be his personal assistant. Uh, I'll drop <laughs> everything I have to do. Let me know. Uh, second one, uh, Keith definitely needs to be invited to Thanksgiving or something this year. Uh, he seems like the perfect person to sit down and uh, tell you everything you need to hear. Um, third one, uh, Mr. Bonesy, I need you to do uh, like a sell-off or some type of thing with Doug now that he's working for the Red Wings. Uh, so we need that to happen. A little bit of a friendly competition, sales yep. style. Um, another one is uh, JJ. He looks very similar to that guy that was on Love is Blind last season. I don't know if you watch, but I'm just saying that's weird. Uh, fourth or fifth one, uh, I just want to give a shout out again to all the older guys. Again, like I appreciate hearing all those stories, all the time spent. Um, again, me as a Jets fan. Uh, born and raised in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, um, 20 minutes away from Foxborough on the same oh. road, growing up. Um, so I had to deal with that entire time my life, fighting that battle. Uh, so, yeah, tough one. Um, and then last but not least, I guess, um, I live out in Washington, right? So I'm over on College Way in Mount Vernon, Washington, right? And I see a, a Jets Yankees sticker on this guy's truck, and I screamed out, you know, got the chant going he was lit up you know but during the time i was watching your show so i blasted it on the speaker i don't know if he heard it and he accepted and said like he watches the show or not but if he does if you remember me in the big uh white pro master uh let me know i'll buy you a drink we can watch some games this season i don't like being alone in washington i know they do some meetups in seattle but that's too far away from me so uh all right yeah i appreciate everything guys Hey, uh, Jonathan, I love it. And uh, are you aware, because I agree with Jorge's comment here, that you resemble Luke Combs? Oh, yeah. Uh, some people think I look a little Samoan with the hair up, but, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. I love it. Hey, Luke <laughs> Combs is awesome. You you are too, Jonathan. Yeah, Luke Combs is great. I'd love to see him live. Tremendous. Uh, Let's see. Super Chat from Dano. He writes in, can I get Dude Wipes to contact me, please? <laughs> I mean, you might need some dude wives after your phone call today, Daniel. Yikes. Uh, Daniel Murphy says, Jake, if you ever get Kay Adams as a guest, let me call in and shoot my shot real quick. Let me tell you something, Daniel. If I had Kay Adams on this show, we would probably need to disable the comments. <laughs> I don't trust any of you sickos out there. All right. Yes, she's a gorgeous woman. I don't trust any of you. All right. I, if I could turn on the setting where only our 4% female audience could comment the K, I would do that. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I definitely wouldn't let Edward on the line that day without pants on. Imagine I take calls with K on the show and we go to the caller without wearing pants. How would that go for me? <laughs> that would not go well. <laughs> oh, too funny. Potentially our final call here. We've gone for almost two hours here on this fine Saturday, just after four o'clock on the East Coast. Phenom is up next. Another OG, another legendary caller. What's up, Phenom? Hey, good afternoon, Jake. Um, first, great show. I came in late. Saw Kay Adams was on there. You know, good morning football. <laughs> she has some great things to say. And just a lot of great topics. I heard while I was in the car, character versus talent. We had a chance to get a great talent when we didn't choose Dan Marino when we went with Ken O'Brien. 
you know, that's that's what I got to say about that. But you, yeah. obviously, it's the character first, and then your best ability is availability. So 100%. I get that. But Phenom, even with Marino, think about it. Like a lot of the stuff about him was like rumblings and like baseless speculation. Like they said he had a drug problem at Pitt, which is why he fell. Like, like Absolutely. I think in today's day and age, Marino obviously would have went a lot higher because they would have been more like due diligence and research into like what was true, what wasn't. Like that was the rumor why Marino fell as late as he did. Uh, absolutely, you're absolutely right, Jake. But that's uh general managers, uh uh franchises, uh thing to get that kind of stuff done to do some background work, hire a private detective, do what you have to do, because that's the most important. Imagine again, we've had this conversation. Imagine Dan Marino with Wesley Walker, Al Toon, Mickey Schuler, you know, those teams would have been unstoppable. So, but that's, that, that's nowhere, but just a great show. And first, let me just say one more thing. Thanks to you, man. What a great platform you've established. And, and, and you're the, you're the pilot in all this, man. <laughs> so you. like, uh, it, it, it's just like having a conversation about sports all the time with you, man. You 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 allow everybody to come in and and and, and take part, and that's what's great because we all have a lot of different views, and it makes it that's what makes it special, you know. It's the variety of life. So keep on doing what you're doing, man. Because imagine we're talking football, and it's April. It's April, so. Salutes to you, man. Salutes to you. I'm your number one fan. Phenom, um, you're the best, man. I'm a huge fan of yours. You know that. So I appreciate the call. Love your love your passion. Jet fans in 68. He's got the Super Bowl three pennant behind him. I love it. Tremendous. I mean, we got the best community, man. I mean, 37,000 of you almost subscribe to this channel, and it's mostly uh, Jet fans. Yeah, there's some, you know, Houston fans from my radio days there, too. But, you know, it's mostly Jet fans. And the data tells me that. I mean, it's just tremendous. We got people gifting memberships for other members. I mean, if you're not on my Patreon, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, I mean, you want to take what we do on YouTube and kind of bring it into more of your everyday life. That Discord chat so much fun with different people interacting. And we got a sports book tab where everyone's posting their bets. We have a tab called Other Sports where you can talk about your teams. A little too much Rangers uh, conversation in that one for me, but it's fine. We got Rangers people, Knicks, Jets, obviously. Um Knicks, I said Knicks already. Uh, Islanders, I mean, just nonstop sports conversation. People were talking about the uh, Caitlin Clark versus UConn game last night. Got the Final Four tonight. So, it's great. Hit the like button, by the way. We're at 334 likes. Let's get the 400 at least. A couple comments I want to read here. I, I, I mean, it's been a great show. But you know what will make this show even better? Sending clowns who deserve it to the shadow realm. And it, it, it's one of the things in life that, you know, it, it, it fires me up. It, it, it makes me whole, right? Because we have some great people who tune into the show. We do, but then we have absolute clowns, clowns who belong either in the realm or belong in stupid town. So without further ado, Hawk writes in, Jake gets at least 5% more credit than he deserves. Jake gets too much credit. He's like Robert Sala. Well, Hawk, it's been a fun ride, but we'll see you later. If the Jets get the good fortune of all being there at 10, if they don't take them, they should be shot. Thank you for that, Hawk. Snowball says we're going to be the old guys who say they saw the Jets win a Super Bowl. I'd sign for that right now. Just give me one. I'll worry about what comes next after that. Today's Jake Asman show presented by our friends at Huga House. Folks, if you haven't gotten your vintage cap yet from Huga, you're missing out. Go to their website, H-U-E-G-A house.com. It's also linked in the description for this video. And when you're there at checkout, use code Jake, or excuse me, wrong code. Don't use code Jake. Use code Asman, my last name, not my first name, A-S-M-A-N, at checkout for 15% off. and. Once you buy one hat, you get the second hat 30% off. So if you really want to splurge on some hats here on a fine Saturday, spring is here. You wouldn't know it in New York, but it is here. Get yourself some cool hats, hugahouse.com. 
promo code ASMIN at checkout. Get the hat that Aaron Rodgers is rocking. Get the hat that Shane Gillis is rocking. I'd mentioned the Bills quarterback who also wears Hugo House, but I want you guys to buy it, so I won't. HugoHouse.com, promo code ASMIN at checkout. All right, last chance here to get a super chat off. Comments, questions, anything on your mind? Um, a lot of people saying help farewell Hawks. See you soon. Yep. That's right. Big Islander fan goes, Hey Jake, big one for the Islanders tonight. Big Islander fan. Um, Tom writes in V man and K would be a power couple. Just as long as her MCL is intact. You're not wrong. Ryan says, with this crazy weather, I'm ordering a Gus Buster umbrella. What's the discount code, Jake? Well, I'm glad you asked. The discount code is Jake at GusBuster.com, and you'll get 15% off. And you'll make Steve Asman happy. Um, Forzit says, am I the only Devils guy here? There's some Devils fans on our Discord. We have mostly Rangers. There's definitely Islanders. And then there's Devils fans, too. But we all unite over the Jets. J1 says, I missed the beginning. Is that a Ricky NY hat? Oh, yeah, it is. You couldn't tell. I mean, if you watch the show, you know I'm rocking the Ricky NY hat now that I'm in New York. I waited until I've only worn this hat in New York out of Ode to Ricky. I didn't bring it back to Houston with me after he sent it to me because I said, if I'm going to wear this hat, I'm only wearing it in New York in honor of Ricky. Um, Sean says Hawks a gesture. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. On that note, I want to thank everyone who tuned in. We're only at 341 likes, so I need you to hit the like button. We need 400 likes. I demand it. Otherwise, Robert Sala told me personally he's not going to try and coach this team at a high level. He's just going to sit back and do nothing. So that's that's what we get if we don't hit the like button. <laughs> Uh, all right. I appreciate everyone who tuned in. Really fun show. Uh, as I say that, super chat near the end. Jason writes in, Jake, a man amongst men. Welcome back to New York. Are we 12 and 5 this year? Go Jets. Are we 12? Right now, I would say 11 and 6. If I had to give a record pick. Subject to change, I want to see what they do in the draft. I'm at 11. I was at 12 last year and I got burnt, obviously. I don't think they would have won 12 if Rodgers was healthy because of the O-line injuries. I think they probably would have won 10, 10 or 11. So I'm saying at 11 for now until we see what happens in the draft. I might go back to 12 post-draft and what happens in training camp. Darren says, hit the like, bitches. Amen. I wouldn't call my audience bitches, but that's fair. <laughs> uh, Rick says, Ricky's not even in New York, but he used to be in Brooklyn. Hence the name Ricky New York. On that note, we will truly end the show now. I want to thank everyone who took time to watch. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. Like and subscribe. Join Patreon if you haven't. I can't recommend that enough. It's such a great platform there with everyone on Discord, plus all the bonus shows and everything else. On that note, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Great moment. And I want to thank you guys for an awesome show. Speaking of Ricky and why he actually has called in. Let's go to him right now. Hey, there we go. Light it up, Ricky. Yeah. Let's get back to your calls right now. One of our favorites is on the uh, Gus Buster hotline. Ricky NY joins us now. What's up, Ricky? Hey, Jake. <laughs> hey, Ricky. How you doing? <laughs> uh, I could take my call, Jake. Uh, I just finished smoking all the available weed in the pan handle, so bear with me if I collapse here and from my personalized flag. Uh, <laughs> Any chance you could send that boxing guy, Gary, to the Jameis Winston town? Maybe Gator can build a special hall for quarterbacks who throw more interceptions than completed passes. Well, not a Florida guy, but again, go to uh, Seminoles all the way. There. If you've got a whole lot of get all of them in there. I don't give a shit. 
Well, I think I got to relight this thing. Hold on a second. I just got this new blowtorch uh, lighter. Let's try it out. Let's try it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Should have backed off that setting a bit. Anyway, Jake, I'll hang up for now and grab the burn tit again. Later, brother. Oh, my God. Yo, Gator is different, man. That dude is different. 